Hi there, and welcome to our tutorial. In this video, we're going to discuss the basic steps of setting up your Brompton processor software and creating a new project. This screen is what you'll see when you first boot up the processor. Most likely, you'll also see this message. It's a default setting on the processor in which it will auto-boot into the previous use show file. Now we let that happen just so I can show you how to get out of it if you need to. This isn't the show file we want to use. We want to start new and fresh with our own settings. So if you come up here to the left to project, click on it once, drop down to close and click once. Here we are back at the main screen. Now on the left are a series of pretty self-explanatory menus and that's one of the great features of Brompton. What you read is what you get. It's a very user-friendly environment. Also, the software operates much like a computer. So you can double click on things to open them. You have copy and paste features. The keyboard shortcuts mimic that of a computer. You can also right click on certain items to bring up a sub menu. Now, running down this list, we have at the top, create a new project. We'll do that today. Right below that is open the selected project. So if we wanted to open Totem, we could click on it and then click on open. Also, we could just double click on Totem and that file would open. Now again, we go up to projects, select close, and that brings us back to our main screen. Import projects. Here you can bring in a file that you might have saved on a USB drive from a previous show, or perhaps it's a copy of your show file and you want to load it on your spare processor. Likewise, right below that is export project. So if you want to save your show file to a flash drive, which is something I highly encourage you to do, this is where you do that. On show site, I do this extensively. Whether I have one processor or 20, I want a copy of every show file. So if I need to, I can load it on a spare processor in a second and have that show back up and running. Delete projects. It is what it says and it delivers what it promises. Right below that is settings. And this is where we start to build our show. Now, if you don't create a name for your processor, it'll just stay blank. And you can always change this later in the show settings, but why not set it here? I'm gonna go ahead and call this training processor. On a show site, I'll name these by the name of the screen that it's controlling. And that's really important. You want it something intuitive. You don't wanna call them Sam or Trudy or what have you. You don't want to name it after your dog. When you have multiple processors linked together and you're controlling them remotely, you want to be able to instantly know which screen you're affecting, which processor you need to talk to. Also, if somebody else has to get in and use the software because you're absent, you want it as intuitive and easy to figure out as possible. Right below that, you can set your IP address. In this case, I'm using one processor and I'm not connecting to it remotely or over a network. So I'm going to leave that be for now. Log level. You can read in the user manual what each of these different settings are. Typically, we leave it set at normal. Below that, you have auto load previous project. Now, we can enable or disable that in this screen. I typically leave it enabled. And on a show site, I will set this to zero seconds because if something goes wrong and that processor reboots, I want it to come up as quick as possible. I don't want to wait 10 or 25 seconds in delay. Keyboard layout, you have multiple options here. Resolution, this is the resolution of your screen connected to the display port on the back of the processor. This is for your local user interface. I'm just going to leave it set to native resolution. For the record, my screen is 1920 by 1080 right now. Enable watchdog. Now, this is an interesting feature. If this is checked, and the processor encounters a problem, it'll shut down and reboot automatically. If you have it unchecked and the processor encounters a problem, it'll sit there in its last known state, which is a good feature if you want to do troubleshooting, but it's probably a bad feature on a show site and under show conditions. I recommend that you typically leave this enabled unless you have good reason to warrant dis disengaging it. Now, once you get to all of your settings done, Come down here, you commit to save them, discard to throw them away, or reset the defaults, which I definitely don't want to do right now. Back over to our list on the side. The next item is security. 
You can set a password for your processor here. Again, greatly beneficial on a show site. Keep somebody from getting into your show and messing with your file. However, it can be very detrimental if you're out and no one else knows the password. Also very detrimental if you forget the password. Date and time, can't explain that any better. Fixture library. This is something we'll talk about more in future videos. Basically, this is a list of all the fixtures that the processor can control and talk to. Now, they come in what's called fixture packs, and you can manage those packs by clicking on Manage Packs. Here it shows we only have one pack loaded. It's Tesla Republic 2.3.2, which is the latest version at this time. Um, you don't need previous versions, because this is going to include those tiles, but you might want to add a custom fixture pack for a specific setting on a tile or a custom tile or a new product that we're demoing. And you would do that by clicking Add. Again, all of these menus are self-explanatory. Remove, export. You can move up or down the list if you have multiple here. Restore defaults. We're not going to do that either. Let's go back to our main screen here. And preferences. This has to do with your graphic user interface and how it's going to react to what you want it to do. Crash management, can't explain that any better. You may want to explore these features in your spare time or read about them in the user manual. Restore factory settings. Now, this is great if your processor has completely wonked out and you can't control it. It's bad in that it'll completely wipe everything on the machine. And what it'll do is restore to a very early version of the firmware with a very early fixture pack that won't control a lot of the newer fixtures, like our CB8. So you want to make sure you have the newest version of the firmware available, or a newer version, that'll work with your fixtures before you ever do this. Format internal storage. Now this is similar to restore factory settings, but it's a little different. This will delete all of your project files, any extra fixture packs you may have added, or any other imported resources, such as a custom test pattern. What it won't do is it won't erase your firmware or the associated fixture pack, but it'll wipe everything else off your hard drive. Reload firmware. This is where you go if you want to upgrade your firmware to a newer version or for some reason need to downgrade it. And you click Browse and you'll have it saved on a USB flash drive which is plugged into the back of the machine. And just to show you, I'm going to double click there. I have version 2.2.6 saved here. Also in this folder, I have the version we're running, which is 2.3.2. .2, and it tells you that right here, what your current version is. Notice that depending on which processor you're using, there are two different firmwares. They're the same version number, but the SX40 processor, the firmware is slightly different because it's a 4K processor with different hardware settings. I'm going to hit cancel and get out of that. Processor status has a lot of important information for you to view. Um, some of this can be accessed elsewhere, but I encourage you to be, make yourself familiar with what's on here in case you need to troubleshoot something. You get a lot of good information on this page. About is your Carillon Tessera end user license agreement splash page, which I'm sure none of you have ever read through, but go ahead, couldn't hurt. And now we're back to our main screen. I'm ready to start our first project. So if you come up here to new, single click, and that brings up this screen. Now, kind of like naming a processor, if you do nothing, rather than a blank screen, what you'll get here is a default project name. And that's fine. You can change it later in multiple places. But I think it's best to name your project what it is. So we're going to call this Below that, you have your canvas size. Now, this isn't the EDID that's coming into the machine. This is the physical canvas you're going to work on within your project. I'm going to leave it set to 1920 by 1080. Um, now, even though this is a HD processor, it can do a 2880 by 720 screen. Um, likewise, 1600 by 1200. Or you can go portrait at 1080 by 1920. 
And then same thing, portrait 720 by 2880. Um, let's just stick with our standard 1920 by 1080. I'm not gonna enable low latency. This is an advanced feature which we'll talk about in another module. And likewise, choose color correction and choose redundancy options. We'll talk about those as advanced features in later modules. All of these can be set within the software in another location as well. So we've got our project name, we've got our canvas size. Let's go ahead and hit create. And here you are. You have your blank canvas, 1920 by 1080. You're ready to go and start adding fixtures and creating your show. With that, I'm gonna mention one thing here. When you wanna close out of a project, you have save as, you have save a copy, close and shut down. Now, you don't have to save your file constantly. The processor automatically does that. Save as will allow you to save it under a different name on the processor. Save a copy allows you to save a copy to a flash drive. You don't have to go back to that export screen. Close simply closes it and takes us back to our original page. And shutdown will shut down the processor from here. Um, again, it won't change your project or hurt your project. Anything you've done to it will be automatically saved. So I'm going to go ahead and shut down and get us ready to start our next module when we'll be adding fixtures. Thanks for joining us and I hope to see you on the next video.